How to sit with hip impingement. Well, we're going to cover this question today and figure out exactly what you could do or changes you can make in your sitting posture to make it so your hip doesn't feel like it's lit up every single time you sit too long. Um, the pain I'm talking about is right in the front of the crease here. If you have other problems down the leg, down the hamstring, down the side of the thigh, the back of the hip, and so on, some of these may work too, but we have many other videos on YouTube that cover those scenarios because they're slightly different in a slightly different problem as well. Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian. I'm part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Coast Mesa, California. Uh, if you ever want to work with us, we have virtual and in-person services, links available at the bottom, but also we have a webinar on the corner that you should take advantage of too. So we're gonna get right into it. This is my chair and I apologize, I'm, I don't have a camera person today so I'm not gonna be changing, you're not gonna see the top of my head and that's okay, right? You only gotta see this bottom part of me. Now for a lot of people, who are working at desks throughout the day, um, they usually don't care about posture until something hurts. And so I'd say most people who have back pain end up in this position here. At some point throughout their day, they realize, oh, my back really hurts. And they go like so, and they, you know, they shake it out, and then they go back to this again. And so this sitting, to be fair, sitting is a very challenging uh, it's a very challenging activity for not only hips and low backs, but also shoulders and necks and so on. Um, most of the people I talk to who sit like 50, 60 hours a week, it's tough to get their stuff all on point here and make it so it goes away uh, until we change something about the sitting. That's what I'm going to do with you today. So first change we can do is actually change, the, uh, change only the one hip where the problem's at, and this is going to be this one in this scenario. And so ideally you want to find a chair where you don't have an arm uh, armrest. If you have an armrest, it's, it's going to limit your options. So go find something else. Um, even a little crummy chair like this will work okay. So we're going to go here and you're just going to let the leg drop back and just let it die off. This in itself reduces a lot of symptoms with many of the people that we see with groin pain. All right. This is not a long-term strategy of sitting. This is just a short-term one to decrease pain and sensitivity. And you do this periodically throughout the day. You don't need to stay in it. You can go back into the crummy posture if you want to. But every once in a while, you just kind of let this thing hang out and just die off. From the front view, it's going to look like so. And you can see why I can't use the armrest anymore because it's in the way. Okay. So this is option one. Option two is actually using the lumbar support, which I don't have here, which usually I tell people again. So you're going to slide off here. You're going to rub your butt actually on the backing of the chair and let your lumbar support actually do its job. And so it makes it easier on you to sit with less effort. But here's the kicker. The reason why this works well, the hip impingement, is because of what it does to your thighs. And I'll do it from the front angle now. So as I sit back and do what I just did, remember there's no arms in this chair. You see how my hips are in a wide open position? Most people with hip impingement don't fare well with this type of stuff or this type of stuff. They fare better with just wide, um, unpolite sitting, if you will. Even if it's bad posture sitting, it's okay. If your knees are out and your feet are generally over or a little bit in, you'll probably feel better. So that's option two. Option three is what we call perching. Okay, This will work better for the people who have uh, had ongoing back pain and they feel like, you know what, I'm really attentive about posture. I have no idea why it's affecting my hip. The reason why it is is because you're dropping your acetabular rim onto the femur here via the anterior pelvic tilt. The aggressive anterior pelvic tilt may be helpful for a short period of time with your low back, but as a long, as, as a long time goes on, you'll start to load other areas. And so this is why um, it's, it's like whack-a-mole a little bit. Um, now, one thing we can do, a way out of going f bad posture, good posture, my back hurts, my hip hurts, my back hurts, my hip hurts, is, is just find the middle somewhere and just develop a breathing strategy too. In a lot of our rehabilitation, we, we teach people breathing strategies because it creates intra-abdominal pressure improvements and it creates better core stabilization. That way they can actually get better function out of the hip and the core in general. And so in this one, you're gonna take your hands on your pelvis and you're gonna dial them forward. Ow, my hip dial them back, out of my back, and go in the middle somewhere and just hang out there, breathe into the 
pincers and just relax. Like, stop worrying about posture that much. You've dialed around a little bit and just breathe. Some people don't realize that their perfect posture is actually creating their groin pain. Okay? And so being able to find a little bit of central stabilization here via core that's not your typical core is one of the easiest ways out of the my back hurts, my hip hurts, my back hurts, my hip hurts, the whack-a-mole game. Okay? Um, also, even stuff like this, sitting down on the ground and doing your computer work on changing the orientation of the chair may help out some people with groin pain, but not others. Um, the real, the real uh, challenging thing with people uh, and watching things like YouTube videos and taking, taking these suggestions is they think that each suggestion is right for everybody, and it's not. Um, I don't suggest anybody guess about what to do. I tell everyone that we see in person or virtually, I say, look, we're going to assess what's going on and we're gonna take a best educated decision about what to do. We're not gonna guess. We're not gonna give you something to do and you're like, oh, you know what, my, my hip feels terrible today. Uh, we're gonna give you exactly what we think should, you should do based upon the assessment that we did. How can you figure out what to do with a car if you don't assess it first? Uh, you can't change the brakes and expect the engine to work better. It's just, you have to assess it. So assessing the situation is very important and um, a lot of different practitioners throughout the globe can do this with you, but they have to do a good thorough physical examination stress test the hip, check out the back, check out the limb, test your reflexes and so on. So there's a lot of things they should be doing and that's what we do here at Performance Place because we don't guess, we assess. So if you guys would like help and you want to come in and check us out, we are in Southern California. Some people, sometimes people fly in, they go to Disneyland or the beach and they spend a couple days and we get the assessment done and then we figure out exactly how to start the recovery program because we assessed what to do and then we, we battery test them in here. Um, over the long term, you, you should have a plan of attack. It's not a treatment that will make everything go away and stay away. It's a plan of attack, a, life, a lifestyle change, an activity change, and so on. And that's what we can supply for people. So if you guys are looking for help, we have virtual or in-person options. Take advantage of the playlist that we have for this whole hip and pinion series, but also take advantage of the webinar that we have. It's really good information. A lot of people have not seen it, and we don't supply it on YouTube because it's a long format video. Talk to you guys next time. See you soon.